Hey everyone, this is Andrew Ty. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Did you know that you can emulate PSP games on iPad OS? So if you look here, we're running the iPad Pro with the M2 chip and we're able to get game emulators like PPSSPP working on this device. This is going to be using the AltStore method using a Mac running macOS Ventura. So this is all of the latest system updates for iPad OS and the Mac side as well. And today we're going to show you how to get these games running and working very smoothly on the new iPad Pro with the M2 chip. So if you haven't subscribed already, then please consider subscribing and you'll be able to keep up to date with the latest game tutorials. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to the Alt Store website. So you can go to altstore.io or you can click on the link at the top of the description. And since I'm going to be installing this on a Mac, I'm going to click this Mac button here and download the Mac OS version. Here I'm going to press allow and allow this to download. Then we're going to go to finder and then open our downloads folder. And within downloads, we're going to find altserver.zip. We're going to double click and extract this. And now we have the alt server application, which we're going to drag and drop into the applications folder. So within applications, we have our alt server here. We're going to double click on this. And here it's asking us whether we're sure we want to open it. Press open. Here we've got notification window coming up here. You can just ignore that. And the main thing we're going to be looking at is this menu bar button here. So we're going to click on this and we'll click install alt store, but we have no connected devices. So what I want to do now is to get my USB-C cable and we're going to plug this into the iPad. And then we're going to plug the other end into our Mac. So that charge icon just basically means that we're connected via this data cable. And you don't necessarily have to be using a USB-C cable. If you have an older iPad with a lightning connector and you just want to connect it to your MacBook, then make sure that you plug the cable in, put the other end into your Mac. If it uses the USB-A end, then you might need an adapter. I'll leave a link to this in the description. So now that we've connected up our iPad, we're going to swipe to unlock so that the iPad can access the data connection. And once the accessory is connected, we're going to see on our Mac, we need to allow this accessory to connect, press the allow button. So again, here it's asking us, are we sure we want to connect it? Press allow. On the iPad itself, it's asking, are you sure you want to trust this computer? We're going to press trust. And then we're going to enter our iPad passcode. So once that's done, the iPad's now connected to the Mac. We're going to click on the Alt Store menu bar icon here and then go to install Alt Store. And then we're going to select our iPad. So I'm going to select this one here that we've connected via the data cable. And at this stage, what we're going to do is we're going to enter our Apple ID and password. So I'm going to be using my real Apple ID and password here. None of this information is going to be saved and the developers of Alt Store aren't going to be able to read your Apple ID. However, if you do feel nervous about this, what you can do is go ahead and create a dummy Apple ID that's not connected to any of your real accounts. It doesn't really matter as long as we have any Apple ID. So go ahead and type in your Apple ID and password and then move on to the next step. So here it's asking us whether we want to install a mail plugin and this is going to be a necessary part of the installation. Then click install plugin and then here we're going to type in our login password for the administrator account. Here it's saying that we need to restart mail and enable the alt plugin in mail's preferences. Press OK. Press OK here. We're going to go ahead and open up mail and if you haven't opened up mail before we're going to go through the basic setup process. And in order to access the settings, we're going to have to add a mail account. So add any email account that you want, or you can add the iCloud account that you already added. Press continue. So once you've signed in, we're going to be able to access the mail preferences. And then we're going to enter our Mac password again. Press OK. So it's asking us about mail privacy protection. Just select whichever one you want. And now that we've added an account, what we can do is go to settings. And within the general tab, we need to click on manage plugins and we need to enable this one called alt plugin .mail bundle. So select this, we need to click allow access and then apply and restart Mac. So now that that's done, we can minimize our mail and then we can go back to the alt store. We're going to click on install alt store and then install it onto the iPad that we've added and then still have connected via USB-C or lightning. Once again, we enter our Apple ID and password. So when you open up your iPad now, you'll see that the alt store has successfully installed here. So we have this new app icon here. And if we tap on it, it says here developer mode required. So what we're going to need to do is to activate developer mode on iOS 16. So what we need to do is to tap on the settings icon here, and then we're going to scroll down and then we're going to go to privacy and security. Then we're going to scroll down again, and then we're going to find developer mode here. And now we can enable developer mode. So I'm going to turn this on and now it's asking us to restart. I'm going to press the restart button. So now that the iPad has restarted, we have this new function here, which is asking us whether we want to turn developer mode on. So what I want to do is to press the turn on button here and then type in my passcode. So once that's been typed in, then we go back to settings and we can check in security and privacy, whether the developer mode is actually on or not and has actually been turned on. So that's all working correctly. I'm going to go back to alt store and open this up. Here it's asking us whether we want to allow Altstore to access network devices. Click allow. 
will allow it to send notifications as well. So this app is clearly designed for the iPhone and it's gonna make this a bit larger. And we can now go ahead and side load applications to the iPad. So if you're into game emulation, one emulator you can install made by the developer of AltStore is Delta, which allows you to play NES, NES, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, and also N64 games. However, today what I'm gonna be doing is installing some more advanced emulators. So in order to do this, what I'm gonna do is open up my Safari icon here, and then we're gonna download PPSSPP. I'm gonna to go to the download section here, and then we're gonna scroll down, and I'm gonna find PPSSPP for iOS. What I'm gonna do is to click Download Latest IPA, close this ad, and then we're gonna find the PPSSPP IPA. This is gonna allow us to emulate PSP games. So let's download this IPA file. And once that's downloaded, we're gonna go here, and then we're gonna find the file that we just downloaded, 1.13.2, which is the latest at the time of recording. Tap on this. We're gonna click the share icon here, and then we're gonna open this with Alt Store. Now Alt Store is gonna open up, we're gonna type in my Apple ID and password, and then click sign in. So here I'm gonna press got it. So once that app has loaded up, we're gonna see that PPSSPP has been loaded and it expires in 365 days, that's fine. I'm gonna go back to the home menu here and we can tap on PPSSPP. And now this is working successfully on the iPad. So I've got a list of PSP games here. So in order to find PSP games, it's quite simple. You just type in the name of the game into Google and then include the word PSP and ISO and then you'll be able to find plenty of sources to find games. Or better yet, what you should do is find a hacked PSP and make an ISO dump of a legitimate disk. So once we have our file, what we're gonna do is to open up a new finder window and then make sure to select the location of your iPad, which is still connected. Then what we're gonna do is to go to the file section and then find PPSSPP. And then basically what I'm going to do is to drag and drop them into the root of the PPSSPP folder, and that's all going to copy over. So once the PSP ISOs are copied over, what you're going to do is go to the PPSSPP app, and then we're going to press the home button here to get to the root of the application. Then we're going to go to documents. Then we can see the PSP folder, and then on the sibling side, we have the new games that we've added as ISO files. So now we can go ahead and open any of these games. So before we open any game, I do recommend changing a couple of settings. The main one is to change the back end to Vulkan, and that normally improves performance, so press yes. And then another thing that I would recommend doing is going down to rendering resolution, and then change this to four times rendering resolution. That's normally going to improve the graphical performance quite a lot. I'm also going to scroll down and turn on the FPS counter so we can see the frame rate and also the game speed as well. And here we're going to load up a game of Tekken 6. So we can see the on-screen controls here. You can see the analog stick, D-pad, left and right shoulder button. If you want to access any of the settings, you can tap this button here and you can do things like save state or change any of the settings and you can go ahead and play any games. So basically what we're doing here is we're playing a PSP game at quite a high resolution and it's all working great on the iPad. We've managed to sideload this correctly. So what I've done now is I've paired my DualSense controller using the settings Bluetooth menu and this is automatically picked up by PPSSPP and basically this works great with the device and uh, this is probably the ideal way to play PSP games. Make sure to use a Sony controller because all of the glyphs are all gonna match up and it works pretty nicely. So anyway, I hope you found this PSP on iPad emulation video useful. If you did, please like, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.